r slash r credit. What's your greatest well I'm ducked moment? This was when I was in 7th grade. I went to a really small Catholic school and my parents a lot of times helped out around the school on weekends. So I was often there in an almost empty school with nothing to do really. I, for some reason, had a very different locker than most of the other kids in the school. Mine was a really short locker, but very wide. I had always wondered if I could fit inside of it. I figured this was a good time to do it with nobody around to see me finally solve this stupid mystery. So I get inside and I'm kind of scrunched in there. Well the goddamn door shuts on me. I'm trying to use my fingers to open the latch from the inside. But I can't do it. So I've locked myself inside my own damn locker until probably 20 minutes later. My dad and another adult family friend comes along and I start pounding on the door. They laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. You know what I'll just let you guys know when they're done laughing. But it's been 14 years. So I'm not sure that's gonna be any time soon. I can't wait for I got caught in my locker and no one helped me part. 17 and a slash no lab. At least they slipped him a smartphone so he can read it from inside the locker. <laughs> sending the right text to the wrong girl. Or sending the wrong text to the right girl. Dude. Look at this duckin' monster. Media attachment. IMG 1109. OMG. Is that a poop? That's disgusting. Sorry. I meant to text that to my bro Craig. Before texting images was a thing. My friend and his roommate would take Polaroid shots of their big hits and leave them for each other. They had a competition for the biggest loaf pinched. A few years after they move out and both are settling in with their new wife slash life and my friend receives a letter from his old roommate. Inside the envelope is a picture of one of those big monstrous knobby turds with a little toothpick flag sticking out of it with the word champ. A friend called me saying he had been kicked out and need help picking his stuff up. Was doing well in chemistry. The only class I had that morning. So figured I could skip one and go help. Show two days later for the next class and they begin handing out graded midterms. That's why you should keep a calendar. Did the teacher let you take it? Did you fail? He did not let me retake it. But I had good grades up to that point and made a good grade on the second midterm and the final. I also did an extra credit assignment near the end which boosted my grade. Overall I probably lost half a letter grade. But my final grade was a 82, so it would have been a B either way. Still one of the worst feelings I have ever had though. <laughs> Buddy needs a ride at 10pm. Borrow dad's car, pick him up, and get on the way. Get pulled over for speeding, and as soon as you see the red and blues he says the one thing you don't want to hear. Don't pull over. My backpack is full of drugs you were taking me to sell. That's a quick way to assure they'd never be getting in my car again. He did. But I made him turn out his pockets before he got in. And no bags. He got me out of the ticket. His dad trained the guy that pulled me over. No questions no nothing. We lucked out big time. <laughs> On stage. And forget the next 8 lines. Edit. Had nightmares for the next week. You don't forget the next 8 lines. You forget everything. Up until X happens and everything falls back into line again. And I don't mean it the cute way. I mean you forget everything. Including why you started doing acting in the first place. As you frantically try to somehow use glazed over terror eye contact to cue everyone else on stage that you are ducked. <laughs> Enlisted in the marines because I wanted the challenge. Not because I actually wanted to fight or anything, naive, I know, while I was in dental, waiting to get my wisdom teeth pulled, a handful of hitheads crashed planes into the World Trade Center, joined the Navy or the Air Force for that hit. You don't go into the Marines hoping to not get into combat. I was in E3R's same position on 9 over 11, but in the Navy, still had that same feeling. P.S. All bets were off on who went to a combat zone. Plenty of sailors. Technical types or otherwise were sent to combat zones as part of the individual augmentee, IA, program. Navy, so you're an electronics tech who worked on ordnance. And avionics. Navy, how do you feel about robots? You will now be assigned to a Ryodi unit to repair bomb robots. 
your turn to do pull-ups in gym, but you have a boner for no reason, and your undersized gym shorts made of 1% mesh and 99% holes in the mesh, aren't doing a very good job of concealing the meat stick. Doing a push-up, and a pull-up at the same time. As a little kid. I was traveling with my family on a plane to Dubai. Once it landed. I went down one aisle. Family went down the other. I didn't know, and thought my family were behind me. Kept walking forward and eventually, when I looked back. They weren't there. Well. Shti. Walked back and forth for what felt like an eternity in the airport trying to find them, since I was lost in a foreign airport. Without my passport or identification, was with my parents, freaking out because there was a police person there, and people kept looking at me funny, since I was an unattended Asian kid freaking out. Eventually I was reunited with my family. But man. It was terrifying as a kid. Home Alone 60 Bay. Starring. Kevin. XUI Berry. It wasn't a fart. I know the feels. And even worse. And it was around people. I was teaching. My job interviewer asked me a really technical question about something I lied on my resume. Probably why he asks honestly. I conduct technical interviews. This is exactly why I ask. Probably February 2014, when the doctor told me I have a brain tumor. Or October that same year. Three months after recovering from the surgery to remove it. When they said it not only grew back, but grew back larger than these kinds are known for, and that it was going to kill me. Are you redditying from the other side? Oh. It's easy to think that was enough to take me out. It wasn't terminal. It was fatal, if I did nothing. So I of course opted to have the surgery done again. Oh it got a lot worse after that. I lost too much blood on brain surgery number 2 after 16 hour surgery, and had to have an emergency transfusion. Then I spiked a fever of 103, when I woke that wasn't going down, and threatened to take me out. I was so out of it, I don't even remember enduring that ordeal. Just the pain. Then the surgery slash tumor caused me to suffer throat paralysis in such a way, that I could no longer swallow food down my throat, or keep it from going into my lungs. That meant I couldn't eat or drink. Fourths kept me hydrated, but I couldn't have a peg tube for food surgically put into me, because I just finished major brain surgery and my body wouldn't be able to handle the additional stress of another surgery. The doctors told my father this, and he burst into tears saying. They just killed my son. For the first time, since I woke from my operation, I sat up in the bed, pointed to my father, and said, I live through this. So it was a race. Can I heal up fast enough to get the surgery, to have the feeding tube implanted in me, before I starve to death? I went 14 days with food, and lost 70 lbs. I now know what it means to starve. Of course. It didn't matter, because they discovered the tumor was still growing once more. I would have to go through 30 days of intense radiation, to try and stop it. This was on top of my physical therapy as I was too weak from losing all that weight and the radiation was also zapping my strength. When I finally finished. I was able to walk, but could not get up from a seated position as my knees were too weak. It took me 6 months to get released back to work, and I still live with the fear that it will come back. Oh. And if you think that this ended happily ever after, 3 months after I returned to my job of 11 years. The company filed for bankruptcy. Shut down. And I was laid off. I've been struggling to find work, but people won't hire me as I work with computer support face to face, and my facial paralysis has made a lot of people pass me over for interviews. But as bad as things are right now. As hard as things are right now. I still look myself in the mirror and say. I live through this. A few days ago I woke up to my boss texting me where are you? Are you okay? I was late for work. What a nice boss though. My boss is like this. I texted him that I needed to leave early for a doctor's appointment, routine checkup, refill scripts, and he called, worried, asking if everything was alright. My dog died, and he told me to stay home with my family. I used my lunch break to take my kids to the dentist. He told me to take the rest of the day off to spend time with them. He works us hard. And expects perfection. 
but his first concern is for the well-being of his staff and our families. <laughs> SA you in a row. Haven't started. Do you at least have the beautifully written? Upvoted for obligatory SpongeBob reference. <laughs> when I was 15 ish, my parents discovered my less than Christian internet habits and installed an extremely rigid internet blocker. I didn't even have access to YouTube again until I graduated high school. Well, I found out that I could access the internet with my phone. It was an old flip phone from about 2003, and I was surprised it had internet at all. I couldn't visit websites or play videos. All I could really do was get Google image results. But it was better than nothing. Until about a week later, when my father came downstairs and asked hey, I just got a bill for $50 surcharge on one of our phones. Do you know why that might be the case? Externally, I said nope. And he said, huh, I'll have to look into it. But internally, I died. Turns out there's a $1 charge every time you use the internet on that phone. So my options were basically to come clean. Or to let them look into it and see the plethora of gay porn searches I'd done. That was a sucky day for Roll Mitch. Let me tell you. My parents discovered my less than Christian internet habits. Okay. Porn. The plethora of gay porn searches. Definitely less than Christian. That was a sucky day for Roll Mitch. Deg. Deg. I like how he is a kid. But in the situation he answers. Like I would. When I'm at work and I've properly overlooked a task. That feeling you get when you feel your can is on black ice and you are inexorably headed for the ditch. Courtesy of physics. And all you can do is try and relax because you know that it is gonna hurt when you hit. Fortunately I hit a deep snow drift. Unfortunately a lady came by a minute later and slammed right into the side of my car. Totaling it. Oh hit oh hit. Flew off. Woo. Saved. Bam. Fuck. It's fascinating just how many thoughts you manage to process in that small amount of time when you realize you are ducked and there is nothing you can do about it. Try steering. Duck it doesn't work. Brakes. Damn no use. Where am I gonna hit? Duck 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 duck. I wonder how much the damage this will cause. I should have enough in my savings account to cover it. Duck it's gonna be embarrassing when everyone sees my crashed car. I'm certain my brother will make fun of me and let me hear about this for a long time. It's gonna be a pain in the ass delivering the car to the repair shop and not have a car for a day. Fuuuuck. Absolutely. It is crazy how fast the brain can process different thoughts. I was a passenger in a car accident once. And at the very last moment. I saw the car about to ram into the side of us. It was enough time for my brain to think holy hit. We are going to get into a car accident now. Well duck. But not enough time for me to say anything. Not a single word. Not a sound. It was a split second moment. I told them afterwards that I actually saw the car only a split second before impact and they were like you saw it. Thanks for telling US. Why didn't you tell US? Because there was no time. When my ex called me two weeks after I finally broke up with her to tell me that she's pregnant. What was the outcome? If I may ask. Unlike op. The stalk delivers. Edit. Op or at least. Op sex is obstetrician delivers. See comments. I smoke weed pretty rarely. But I decided to have a bowl last Friday night. Random urinalysis at work Monday morning. I drank a gallon of water. And pissed pretty much straight water. Doubt it worked though. I've been sitting here all week. Waiting for a call from hours. I don't know what I'm going to do if I lose my job. Just. Keep. Detoxing. If you fail you can claim it's a false positive and retake it that next week. But you should just. Keep. Detoxing. Exercise. 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 Ducking like and subscribe.